The special test you are about to see was conducted over seven days by the boat test team, and its data has been computer checked thoroughly for accuracy. Any opinions expressed are entirely those of boat test and its test captains. Hi, Captain Steve from BoatTest.com, and today we're going to have a look at something that might possibly be the next big thing in the marine industry. It's a very innovative prop design invented by Greg Shero, the CEO of Shero Engineering, then fine-tuned by himself and a team of engineers at the company he founded to make this design a reality. At first glance, it seems to have three blades, but its loop design actually creates six blade surfaces that are perfectly balanced. The development of the Shero prop has been a slow and expensive process, taking a concept and working models through years of CAD modeling, R&D, and testing, with review by top engineers with over 150 years of combined experience in the marine and aerospace industries. Shero Engineering took its design to the Marine Hydrodynamics Laboratory of the number one ranked university for naval architecture in the U.S., the University of Michigan. Here, scale models of the props were tested for all sorts of applications to exacting standards. With input from the test tank data and real-world results, the designs were refined with more computer modeling and applied to multiple applications. Shero Engineering has now designed propellers for a wide range of applications, from tugboats to supertankers to recreational boats to planes and drones. The most lucrative application of this radical new prop is on supertankers and other large commercial ships, where it could potentially save them millions of dollars a year in fuel savings. It's the prospect of income from large shipbuilding that has helped fund Shero's research for props in the recreational boating sector. But the question begs, will this new design concept work on small recreational powerboats, and how will it match up with some of the most efficient conventional props on the market? To find out, Botest sent a four-member team to Detroit, Michigan, and spent seven days testing the innovative new design, along with two other conventional props, to compare their performance. Our test procedure was much more sophisticated and precise than anything Botest had done before. The team at Shero Engineering had installed an off-the-shelf NEMA 2000 data recorder so real-time data could be analyzed later. Here we see a sample of our computer recordings of the tests we conducted. We took our performance readings during a steady state that lasted approximately 12 minutes at 1500 RPM. Then when we visually verified on our gauges what appeared to be average readings, we turned on the recording device, captured the red RPM data, blue speed numbers, and the green fuel flow numbers. All three at two different times lasting from 30 seconds to over a minute. Then the computer averaged the readings in that period for the numbers provided. As can be seen, RPM, speed, and fuel flow are constantly fluctuating, and following this procedure, it gave us the most accurate numbers possible. Our test boat was a 20-foot plain Jane bow rider with an 8-foot beam, like millions of other boats on the water. It had a total tested weight of 3,543 pounds, two-person test team, equipment, and fuel. For power, we had a new Mercury 3-liter inline four-cylinder four-stroke engine rated at 150 horsepower. The first prop we tested was a popular size made by a well-known brand that has been a household word in the marine industry for many years. It was a three-blade, 14 and three-quarter inch diameter by 15 inch pitch stainless steel prop. Now, for those unfamiliar with prop geometry, the diameter is the distance from blade tip to blade tip across the hub or its perimeter. The pitch is the theoretical distance that the prop blade would travel in one revolution through a solid without slippage. Imagine it running through a solid block of wood. Before testing, we made sure it was in perfect condition, no nicks or imperfections. Our test boat's fuel tank held 33 gallons, and the overall fuel weight was 200.4 pounds. We were particularly careful to keep the weight in the boat the same, even to the point of using test captains of near identical weight. After fueling, we headed out of the marina for the test course, which was laid out in the Detroit River that drains Lake St. Clair into Lake Erie. It's an ideal place because the water is generally flat and the current predictable. Of course, we ran reciprocal courses for all measurements, even though we were recording speed through the water, not over the ground. Recording idle speed and fuel consumption is important because according to the International Council of Marine Industry Associations, ICOMIA for short, on average, boaters spend 40% of their engine hours at idle. And that makes sense because anglers spend a lot of time trolling, pontoon boats cruise slowly most of the time, and other recreational boats spend time idling to and from water sports locations. All of that places a premium on good fuel economy at this setting. At the boat's idle speed of 650 RPM, 
With prop number one, we went 2.5 miles per hour, burning 0.5 gallons per hour, giving us 5 miles per gallon for a range of 149 statute miles. At 1,000 RPM, we were moving at 4.2 miles per hour and burning 0.9 gallons per hour, getting the same 5 miles per gallon. With this prop, the boat did not get on plane until 3,700 RPM, and at 4,000 RPM, the boat was going 27.7 miles per hour with a 3-degree running angle, getting 4.5 miles per gallon for a range of 133 statute miles. At 5,500 RPM, we hit 41 miles per hour, but that wasn't our top speed. We're saving that little nugget as a surprise for the end of this video. Then it was back to the marina to top off the fuel, take the prop off, check it again and make sure it suffered no damage, then check prop number two before putting it on. The second prop we tested was also a premium industry three-bladed propeller and one known for its fuel efficiency at cruising speeds. Like the first prop, it's made of high-strength stainless steel. This one measured 15 inches in diameter by 15 inch pitch. Again, we went from idle to 1000 RPM and then up to wide open throttle in 500 RPM increments. This prop performed nearly identically to prop number one, except it got up on plane at 3400 RPM and at 3500 RPM went 21.2 miles per hour with a running angle of 2.6 degrees, getting 4.3 miles per gallon for a range of 128 statute miles. This is the major advantage of this prop versus the first prop we tested. It can get on plane at a lower RPM. Once again, it was back to the dock to top off the fuel. Then came the moment we were all waiting for. Its basic design is called a loop prop. There has never been anything like it made before, and Sharrow Engineering tells us that it holds 20 patents in key countries around the world. Greg Sharrow had the honor of putting on the prop for what could be a history-making test. Then we were off to the testing grounds. This is the hour we've all been waiting for, and I have to admit, I couldn't wait to see how this boat performed with the innovative new prop. Again, we began our rigorous testing starting at 650 RPM. As soon as we got the boat in what is called a steady state, we recorded the numbers and all were computer verified. When we compared the Sharrow prop to the readings we got for the other two props, we found the Sharrow prop was 16% faster than both at the idle RPM of 650, and the miles per gallon difference was again 16% better for the MX-1. Range increased 14.8%. And remember, this is where 40% of the engine hours are employed on average. At 1,000 RPM, it was 14 to 17 percent faster than the other two conventional props at the same RPM and got from 4 to 8 percent more miles per gallon. Now it really gets interesting because at 2,700 RPM, the test boat, powered by a Mercury 153 liter four stroke engine propped with a 15 by 15 Sharrow propeller model MX1, got on plane using the same criteria as with the other props. At 3,000 RPM, we were going 23.7 miles per hour and the running angle was 2.3 degrees. Solidly on plane and clearly outperforming both the conventional three-bladed stainless steel props. The Sharo MX-1 prop doubles the speed, miles per gallon, and range of the other two props while they wallow, pushing water, trying to get over the hump and on plane, even though the prop pitch was only 15 inches. At 3,500 RPM, prop number two got on plane while prop number one was still struggling along, pushing its bow wave. The Sharrow prop was 25% or more efficient than prop number two in terms of speed and 23% more fuel efficient. Finally, at 4,000 RPM, the test boat got on plane with the stainless steel prop number one and the aluminum Sharrow propeller model MX-1 was still the fastest by a large margin and got marginally better miles per gallon in range. When we compare fuel efficiency for the whole RPM range, we find that at idle, the MX-1 was 16% more efficient at idle and 15% more efficient at 5,500 RPM. When we compared speed with the miles per gallon, we can see on this chart that the Sharrow MX-1 prop is more fuel efficient at all speed data points than the other two. But the biggest difference was at planing speeds, where the Sharrow prop was as much as 179% more fuel efficient. When it comes to running speeds, we find that the Sharrow prop was absolutely the fastest prop at all RPM settings, and that's remarkable because most props are strung at one end of the RPM scale or the other. The numbers speak for themselves, and the most important number on this chart is the one at 3000 RPM, where the Sharrow MX-1 was solidly on plane going 23.7 miles per hour, while the boat with the other props were still struggling to get on plane. Of course, everyone's anxious to know which prop is fastest at wide open throttle. 
That's why we left top speed off of all the previous charts. It's really a rarely used speed in most boats, and Icomia says that it only accounts for 6% of engine hours. Typically, boats that are fast at the low end or even the mid-range are slower at wide open throttle. So, the winner is... The all-new, dare we say, revolutionary Shero MX-1 Prop. It's from nearly 2% to nearly 7% faster at wide open throttle, 5850 RPM. So now that I've tested the Shero Prop, I actually came on board thinking that there's always a little bit of hype with everything. With every boat I test, with every prop I test, it's always, this is the greatest, this is the greatest, and I think, yeah, okay, we'll see about that. But this one actually impressed me. Um, we tested it for the boat first with um, a regular propeller, uh, and then we put the Shero prop on, and the difference was astounding. The boat got on plane at a lower speed, it got on plane quicker, and it maintained plane at a much lower speed. Right away as I was maneuvering around the dock, I found a lot more maneuverability than I expected, uh, especially in reverse. Uh, we didn't have good controllability in reverse with the original prop, but once I put the Shero prop on, I had a lot more maneuverability, better steering, which we don't usually have in reverse. Now, once we got underway, it was cruising really nicely. Most noticeable was how quiet it was and how smooth it was. There was an awful lot of vibration with the other prop, and I know that this was engineered to perfection, so it wasn't a faulty prop, but there was just a lot of vibration, a lot of um, ventilation going under the hull that we could feel that reverberated through the boat. All of that was gone with the Shero prop. Putting it into hard turns with the original prop, there was a lot of slide uh, like you were running a slalom course and um, an excessive amount of chine walk. But once we put the Shero prop on, 90% of that disappeared. There was still a little bit of chine walk because that's more of a function of the hull than the prop, but a lot of it went away. But most importantly, we were glued to the water. I was taking um, high speed performance turns that were just unbelievable. The boat was glued to the water. So there is a, definitely a lot more maneuverability, a lot more functionality, a lot more efficiency, obviously, because we measured that. And I have to say a lot more comfort thanks to the smoothness and the quietness. So surprisingly enough, I, it, the, it lived up to the hype. It lived up to all of the you know reputation that I had heard about. It's confirmed. So it gets a thumbs up for me. I'm a big fan now of the Cheryl Prop. Now, let's summarize what we've discovered in our testing. First, we saw that at idle speed, the Shero MX-1 prop was 16% faster as well as 16% more fuel efficient. Secondly, the test boat got on plane faster with the MX-1 prop at 3,000 RPM versus 3,500 RPM for the number 2 prop and 4,000 RPM for the number 1 prop. It should be remembered that the number one prop had a quarter inch less diameter than the other two, which had to affect its performance to some degree. Third, noticeably less vibration than the conventional three blade props we tested. Fourth, the MX-1 had the highest top speed of all three props and had a higher speed at all RPM settings. Fifth, when on plane, the Shero prop had better fuel consumption numbers on all our settings except one. Check out the complete test charts on all three props on the boat test website under Shero Props. Sixth, in my opinion, the handling of the boat with the Shero Prop showed a vast improvement over the two conventional props. So why does the Shero Prop perform so well? Well, there are several reasons, but the most important can be seen in these underwater videos. On the bottom is a conventional prop. Note the spiral of bubbles twirling off the blade tip. They're called vortices, and they induce drag on the prop, slowing the boat and causing more fuel to be consumed. Now look at the Shero prop above. Note that there are no prop tip vortices to cause drag because there's no prop tip in the first place. This is the secret of the design success. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.